Few situations were more desperate than that of the British in the early years of World War II when they faced being starved into submission by a German blockade. Desperate times, as the saying goes, calls for desperate measures. And few measures show how desperate the British were to combat the threat of submarine and air attacks on their convoys than the first stopgap counters to the threat, the Cam and Mack vessels of the British and Dutch Merchant Marine, in essence, civilian aircraft carriers. With the fall of France in June 1940, Britain found itself in dire straits as the full weight of the German Kriegsmarine and the Luftwaffe started to throw their weight against the beleaguered island. Whilst the Battle of Britain and the plans for the invasion of England garner a great amount of attention, the most important campaign for the British, the Battle of the Atlantic, was just about to hit its bleakest point. With access to the French Atlantic Coast naval bases, the Germans could range their U-boats unimpeded on patrols to interdict the critical war and food supplies that the British home islands needed to stay in the war. But with access to French airfields, the Luftwaffe could also use its long-range Focke-Wulf FW-200 Condor aircraft to track convoys far out into the Atlantic. Well out of range of land-based air cover, the Condors could shadow convoys and transmit constant contact reports, which were relayed to the U-boat wolf packs and to the Luftwaffe's dedicated anti-shipping units who could swoop down with torpedoes and bombs. The situation was critical. The Royal Navy did not have any fleet carriers to spare for convoy protection. They had already lost HMS Courageous whilst on anti-submarine patrol in 1939, and HMS Glorious during the Norwegian campaign, and simply could not risk any more carriers for this task. Plans were laid and orders placed for a new type of ship, the escort carrier, but it would be several years before enough of these ships were available to make a difference. This was too long, as the crisis caused by lost shipping required more immediate remedy. In 1940, aircraft attack sank 192 Allied ships, a total tonnage loss of 580,000 tonnes. This would be exceeded in the first four months of 1941 alone. Desperate to stem these depredations, the British rapidly developed a stopgap weapon designed to drive off snooping condors and break up aircraft attack, the Catapult Armed Merchantman. The CAM ships were civilian freighters that had a launch ramp fitted with a rocket power catapult. These would have a fighter, generally an old Hawker Hurricane, mounted, which would be launched to attack enemy aircraft. CAMs carried two Hurricanes, nicknamed Hurricats, with the alert fighter having the pilot strapped in for two hour shifts when on standby. Once launched, the pilot would have no chance of landing his aircraft unless he was in range of land. Therefore, he would have to catch his target, deal with it, and ditch close to friendly ships in the hope that they could pick him up. Initially, five vessels were converted and operated by the Royal Navy, the fighter catapult ships, which proved the concept on the 11th of May 1941, when Sub-Lieutenant F.M. Harvey, flying a ferry former from an FCS, drove off a lurking condor and landed in Iceland. This was followed up when Lieutenant R. Everett achieved the first FCS slash cam kill on 3rd of August 1941. Flying a hurricane from HMS Maplin, he shot up a condor that subsequently crash landed in France. While the FCS vessels were commissioned naval ships, the subsequent cams were all civilian registered with merchant marine crew. The naval ratings and air crew all became, in effect, members of the merchant navy. The ships continued to carry cargo loads in addition to their new fighters. In total, 35 CAM conversions, plus the original five FCSs, were carried out and served between May 1941 and September 1943. In that time, they shot down nine German aircraft and drove off several others. Twelve CAM ships were lost in action. The CAMs, while undeniably an innovative, if desperate, solution, were very much a stopgap and plans soon formed for a more ambitious conversion that would allow merchant ships to act as proper carriers with the ability to fly off and land aircraft whilst retaining almost their complete freight cargoes. The merchant aircraft carriers, abbreviated to MAC, were grain carriers or oil tankers that had a flight deck and, in the grain ships, a hangar, added to the top deck of the ship, enabling them to operate a flight of anti-submarine aircraft. The MAX were aimed at helping to counter the biggest threat to merchant shipping in the war, the dreaded U-boats. 
Between the start of the war in September 1939 and the end of June 1942, U-boats had sunk 1,602 Allied ships of some 7,780,000 tons. 585 ships of over 3 million tons had been sunk in the first six months of 1942 alone. The situation was at crisis point, and it was the ship's owners who offered the solution, with a number of powerful shipping magnates working to convince the British Admiralty of the viability of the conversion. The first two Macs were ordered in June 1942, and were built effectively from scratch on the hulls of grain ships that were just beginning construction. The first of these, the Empire McAlpine, entered service in April 1943. All of the vessels carried three to four of the ubiquitous fairy swordfish for hunting submarines, as well as a single four-inch gun and combinations of 40mm Bofors and 20mm Orlicans for anti-aircraft defence. In total, six grain ships were built as Max, along with 13 tankers, four new builds and nine conversions. Of note amongst converted tankers were the MVs Gadila and Makoma, which were Dutch registered and crewed vessels, and as such, the first aircraft carriers operated by that country. This is made even more peculiar by the fact that though the air and gun crews of the MAX were all provided by the British and Netherlands navies, the crews were merchant mariners, and, like the CAMs, the military personnel had to transfer to the merchant marine while serving on board. The ships lost some cargo space to compensate for the aircraft, weapons and additional crew carried, with the grain carriers losing 30% and the tankers 10% of their capacity. At the time of their conception, this seemed like a good compromise, as both shipping and aircraft carriers were of critical need. However, by the time they started to enter service, the U-boat threat was being pushed back. New technology and long-range aircraft had closed the gaps in coverage, and the dire situation of the early war years had rescinded. The MAX did see use as escorts and engaged in anti-submarine patrols. Over 4,000 sorties were flown by MAC aircraft, and though no U-boat kills were ever attributed to them, they certainly drove off plenty of attackers. The presence of a MAC in a convoy greatly heartened other crews because of the success they had in protecting their charges. The ship's ability to carry both cargo and aircraft was also exploited to ship the backlog of aircraft in the United States to Britain, that were needed for the build-up to D-Day and the subsequent campaign in Northwest Europe. Though it was briefly considered in late 1943 to use the ships in the Pacific with fighter aircraft, by then American shipbuilding was launching aircraft carriers of all types in staggering numbers. In September 1944, the MAX began to be taken out of service for conversion back to pure freight ships. Many would go on to see decades of service in their original roles. While CAM and MAC ships were of limited utility as compared to purpose-built warships, their successful use means that the concept of using civilian ships as ersatz carriers is far from dead. With the huge size that modern container ships are reaching, in combination with the helicopter and Vestal aircraft like the Harrier and F-35, proposals to use this idea to quickly build up carriers is still one that is very much considered a possibility. In the early 1980s, experiments were conducted by the US and Royal Navies, while in 2011, shipping giant Maersk even put out promotional material on the idea that their container ships could be used in a range of military roles with the use of modular conversion kits. It remains to be seen if the idea of flying aircraft in war from civilian ships ever needs to happen once again. But with the examples of the remarkable Mac and Cam conversion, it's probably wise not to bet against it. Hope you folks enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. If you are interested in the subject and military history, check out the links in the description.